nobody physically saw me for a year. There have been plenty of times when Taylor Swift thought her career would be done for. Like when all that drama went down between her, Kanye West and Kim Kardashian. In 2016, Ye dropped his track Famous. No pun intended, the song has a famous line about Taylor Swift. It referenced their long-running feud. Yeah, remember when Taylor was giving her VMA acceptance speech? Then Kanye came and interrupted her. So, the song was supposed to end the feud between Kanye and Taylor, but it only fanned the flames. Ye name-dropped Taylor in the song, saying, I made that B famous. Taylor clapped back at the rapper in her Grammy acceptance speech that same year. There are going to be people along the way who will try to undercut your success or take credit for your accomplishments or your fame. It sparked massive debate online. Eventually, West's then-wife Kim K stepped in. Don't even think about it. The reality star claimed she had a recording of Swift on the phone approving Kanye's lyrics. She even shared it online. The reason why it will be happy is because it has a very controversial line at the beginning of the song about you. Everyone turned against Swift and started calling her a snake. They said she was manipulative and a liar because she approved the lyrics but didn't want to end the feud. I'm still someone who is the first to apologize when I'm wrong. And I think, but I think I'm better at standing up for myself when I've been wronged. That's something that I think also comes with growing up. On every one of Taylor's Instagram posts after that, people were just dropping snake emojis in her comments. That took me down psychologically to a place I've never been before, the pop star admitted. That's when Swifties found out Kim's recording was a snippet. I don't know what's going on. Four years into the drama, the full recording was leaked. It changed the whole story around. Well, is it gonna be mean? No, I don't think it's mean. Okay, then, what, then let me hear it. But the damage was done. Taylor moved to a foreign country and didn't leave her rental home for a year. She even stopped hanging out with her friends because she felt like she couldn't really trust anyone. And I've been doing this for 15 years and I'm tired of it. At that point, her career had taken a significant hit. But instead of giving up, she focused on what she loves, music. I really have to tell this story in a way that gets to the heart of it. Taylor Swift has been in the game since she was 14 years old. As of 2024, Ms. Swift's net worth sits at a whopping $1.1 billion. Believe it or not, she was just 34 years young when she hit that milestone. Billionaire status might be new, but superstardom ain't that fresh. T-Swizzle is so popular that her tours get sold out in like one minute. Can you believe that all of Swift's money comes from her music? Unlike other celebrities, this pop star doesn't have any side hustles to up her bag. In fact, it was her heiress tour that bumped her net worth up from millions to a billion. I'm feeling very overwhelmed by the fans' um, love for the record. I'm also feeling like very soft and fragile. Aside from Taylor's cut, her tour generated $5 billion for local US town economies. It was one of the most popular tours ever. Then there was the movie that came with it. Because she has the cash, Taylor paid for the production of her tour's movie. Because she bypasses studios, Taylor would get half the total ticket sales. And you'll never guess how much the movie made. More than $260 million. But in the last six or seven years, I've just been constantly making things. And the more things I make, the happier I am. So what does a girl like T-Swizzle do with her billion dollar net worth? For starters, Taylor has a super impressive real estate portfolio. We're talking at least $150 million invested in properties. Isn't that what life's all about? Did you know Taylor was only 20 when she bought her first home? It was a 3,200 square foot industrial style loft. It's situated in the very chic luxury building in Adelicia. Taylor designed the interior herself. She once described it as a shabby chic Alice in Wonderland. The second property Swift bought was a $2.5 million estate in Nashville for her mom and dad. Rumor has it that the singer claimed the guest house in the backyard for herself. You'll never guess what she uses it for. A state-of-the-art recording studio. Oh, what we'd give to be the padding on those walls. So I do what I always do. I go into my lonely little corner and I write a song about it. But really, these are the most impressive properties in Taylor's collection. 
First, her Tribeca penthouse. Taylor Swift is so rich that she bought not one but two townhouses in a very upscale neighborhood. She bought one, then decided to have the one next door too. Taylor broke down the walls, renovated and turned it into a super luxe penthouse. Now, it's worth at least 50 million. You can do anything you want, Taylor Swift. Thank you for saying that. Finally, there's Swift's magnificent Rhode Island mansion. She bought it in the midst of her romance with Robert F. Kennedy's grandson, Connor. Ever since then, the mansion has been the spot for Swift's famous, highly Instagrammed Independence Day parties every year, with luxurious interiors, a fun-sized pool, and sprawling ocean views this is definitely one of the most valuable assets in Swift's portfolio. But even more than property, Taylor loves spending her cash on travel. She's known for her nights on the town. But because she's always traveling the world, Taylor wanted a more luxe upgrade. So, she invested in two private jets. You heard that right. The bigger one, aka the Dassault 7X, was worth a staggering 54 million at purchase. Every time she uses it, Taylor drops a heavy bag too. Plenty of people have looked into Taylor's flying habits. It's been the talk of many environment advocates. But before we get into that, we have to share this. Guess how much they estimate Taylor to spend on her flights for one day? Nearly 20 grand. And she flies a lot, so we can't even imagine how much she's spent on travel by now. That brings us to the drama over Taylor's flying habits. A college student once started social media accounts that track celebrity private jets. The data would explain how these jets contribute to the increasing pollution of the planet. And based on the info, Taylor was a big culprit. This led to a whole legal dispute. Eventually, the person had to shut down their social media accounts because of threats by Taylor's legal team. In the meantime, Taylor quietly sold off the smaller of her private jet duo. It wasn't so she could make a bag. After all those flights, she probably sold it at a loss. But the main reason behind this was so Taylor could do something about the accusations being thrown at her. Taylor made that move quietly and let her team handle the rest. I don't think pressure on you because I don't think you Yeah, felt there's pressure. Really? Yeah, for sure. Swift's rep team told the media that the pop star was offsetting her carbon footprint. How? By investing in projects that do things like plant forests and maintain natural areas. But is that really enough to make up for all the emissions that come from just one of her flights? What do you think of the Taylor Swift jet drama? Share your thoughts in the comments. That's it for today. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See ya.